Well, researchers tell us that everybody lies at work. Yes, everyone. Some studies, in fact, find that we tell two to three lies in a 10-minute conversation at work. And to show us, help show us how to spot these lies and maybe how to disguise your lies a little bit better, <laughs> we have our career expert, uh, Kim McNicholas, here, along with body language expert, Dr. Carol Goman. And uh, welcome to both of you. I'm glad you made it thank in through you. the rain. Yes, Thanks thank a lot you. for that. And, and Kim, I have to assume that the lies that we're talking about are just little white lies, right? Yeah, the, the real minor ones. For mm -hmm. example, let's say a boss actually says to an employee or asks an employee, Hey, you know, do you like my new haircut? Well, oh, what right? are you going to say? <laughs> what is the employee going to say? Exactly. Yeah, I hate your new do. Right. I mean, that's pretty much setting up the employee for a lie. Yeah. And I would argue that, that most people really don't want to lie. They, they lie, and I might be, you know, just you know, giving the world the benefit of the doubt. But I think they do it more for self-preservation and, and for acceptance, right. right? I think you're right. And yeah. you know, we really don't like to lie, most of us. <laughs> of course. It, it's stressful. Yes, you know, it is. I mean, it's really, first you have to remember the truth, right. you have to, then you have to create the lie. <laughs> yes. You have to remember not to tell the truth. You have to kind of prepare for those follow-up questions to the lie. Exactly. I mean, it's exhausting. It really so is. So before any of us do an out-and-out -out lie, we try a lot of little verbal mm -hmm. sidesteps so we don't even have to lie outright. Well, let's talk about how this might appear in a job interview. Right, so for example, suppose I say to Carol, well, how did that first interview go over with human resources? <laughs> Well, you know how first interviews are. Hey, this is really nice office space. <laughs> how long have you been in this building? You see, before I outright lie, I'll just try to change the subject. Yeah, you're taking left turns sure. all over the place. So why did you leave your last job? You want to know why I left my last job? See, I just repeat the question. That gives me a little bit more time to figure out how I want right. to answer it. Exactly. Have you ever done drugs? Oh, I don't do drugs. <laughs> I don't even take aspirin, no, really. See, I didn't answer, have I ever done drugs? So what about, you know, did you leave your last job on good terms? Do I look like the kind of person who would have had a fight with her boss? <laughs> <laughs> Never answered the question. Again, so, verbal sidestep. Yeah, so you're sidestepping here, but should you ask then follow-up questions to get to the response that you want to hear? Yeah, you really do need those those follow-up questions in order to determine, you know, whether or not a person is is just, um, you know, uncomfortable or nervous or, or whether they are, in fact, not telling the truth. Absolutely. In fact, mm -hmm. all of these are cues to dig deeper. There's no real one sign of deception, but there are hot spots. So you want to be able to recognize some things mm -hmm. so that you can, when you need to, Go further. So what are those, some of those, your body language experts, so what are some of those nonverbal signals that anyone can spot someone who's being deceptive? <laughs> well, a lot of them are stress signals because mm -hmm. lying is stressful. Your heart rate goes up, breathing rate goes up, your blood pressure goes up. And in order to pacify those, some people will, you know, do pacifying signals or they will, you know, the first sign of stress actually is to freeze. Although we look for people oh. who are nervous, uh -huh. but freeze. So that normally animated person who all of a sudden just stops. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a signal that something's happened. That, that's a hot spot right there. Okay. What about with the eyes? Because you were saying uh, the last time that you were on that you can't always spot a liar with their eyes. Yeah, that's that big myth that mm -hmm. liars can't look in the eye. Yeah, they always say, look me in the eye and say that. That's right. right. Yeah. And so they do. <laughs> <laughs> and they get away with it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But there are a couple of interesting lies that you're detecting things that you can spot through the eyes. One uh -huh. is that pupils dilate when you lie. Mm. For the Oh, that mental effort again. Uh -huh. And another one that some research has been done that said that when a person lies, their blink rate actually decreases as they oh. create the lie and tell the lie, and then increases about up to eight times as much right after they've lied. That's counterintuitive because you would think when someone's lying that they'd be blinking like crazy. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you know, stress is, a high blinks are a signal of stress. Mm -hmm. So people that have mm -hmm. a normal high blink rate look like they can be deceptive, but according to the research, not so much. I see. What about emotional incongruence? Oh, well, that's an interesting one. That's when you say something and your facial expression or your body language totally belies that. Right, for example, let's say, you know, during that interview, if, if you say to me, gosh, you know, my boss was absolutely amazing. I love working for him. And then on your face, you actually show disgust. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> and again, signs to dig deeper. Right, okay. So let, let's turn it on its, on its head for a second. What about for the person who's trying to get away with the lie? 
Uh, yeah, well, the first thing to do, of course, is to look people in the eyes. <laughs> because that, yeah. even though it's incorrect, it's the most widely held myth about okay. lies. Okay. So you want to maintain eye contact, particularly when you're saying something really important, like, mm -hmm. I am absolutely right for this job. Yeah. And the second thing is you want to control your stress. Because stress signals are the things that people really notice. So you want to take deep breaths before you get into that room. Mm -hmm. Maybe that power pose that we did last yeah, week. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Before you go into the room so that it lowers your stress hormones and mm -hmm. increases your confidence. You want to make sure that if you're getting fidgety with your hands, you just place them in your lap. You want to control your stress. So to wrap this up, what are some of the biggest mistakes people do when trying to spot liars? Well, for one thing, they look at stress signals and they think, aha, liar. And as we said, what it is is you know that they're nervous about something, but you don't know what it is. Yeah. The other thing is you can get pretty good at spotting emotion. So if I saw you getting fearful when mm -hmm. I ask you a question mm -hmm. I could say okay he's afraid but I don't know if you're afraid of being caught in a lie or if you're afraid of because you're truthful of not being believed sure so again dig deeper right so the trick is to look for those hot spots and just to see whether or not someone could or could not or may or may not be deceptive and yeah. and then just dig deeper yeah that's it dr. Carol Goldman uh, thank you for joining us Kim McNicholas thank you the you have a book out called the truth about lies in the workplace <laughs> Coincidentally. Which, which, which I think is, where can people get this Amazon is Amazon. always a good com? place okay all right well thanks a lot for joining us thank you thank all you right.